to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Friday, November the 1st, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, we bring you the latest on the shootings at LAX. Then, top brass reveal Obama's military purge, and CISPA returns with a vengeance. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. They can take your kids for no reason. They can SWAT team you. They run it. They love it. It's fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, I appreciate your call, you terrorists. Well, our top story tonight is the shooting that's unfolding at LAX. Now, we know that one person has tragically lost their lives. Several people have been shot. We know very little besides that. In terms of the facts of the case, we've, ne we've now been told that it was Paul Cian Ciancia, a 23-year-old, reportedly suicidal, according to his family. An eyewitness told the news that the shooter was wearing a TSA uniform, but now we're being told by the police that it was camo, so details are constantly changing and uncertain at this point. We don't know how many people have been shot. We've been told several have been shot, that one is in critical condition, two are listed in fair condition at UCL, UCLA Medical Center. Now, this is something that is going to have an effect not just on the families that were affected by the shooting, the person who lost his life, but as Paul Joseph Watson points out, uh, will the LAX shooting be exploited to arm TSA agents? Or will it be used as an excuse for more gun control? It was just recently that a semi-automatic weapons ban was overturned in the California legislature, not signed into law by Governor Brown. So the concern is what's going to happen in the airports? We've already seen a reality-free zone there. We just had information from a John Corbett's lawsuit against the TSA that they knew that there were no terrorist plots against airports or against airplanes. In a striking admission from the TSA, we learned in their documents that were for official use only, that were mistakenly posted by the government on PACER.gov, that as of mid-2011, terrorist threat groups present in the homeland are not known to actively be plotting against civil aviation targets or airports. Instead, their focus is on fundraising, recruiting, and propagandizing. And John Corbett also pointed out in that lawsuit, as he was uh, arguing his case, he said, even if the TSA did deter terrorists at these nude body checkpoints, they would simply move to another area, for example, where people are standing in line. Lines that have been made much longer, much slower by these new procedures. And he says that that would create a terrorist dream of targeting hundreds of unarmed travelers plus dozens of unarmed federal employees. Exactly what we saw happen today. Now, we also had the TSA admitting just this last week and the FCC admitting that there was absolutely no reason to ban cell phone use. So the airports and the airplanes and flight in general has become kind of a twilight zone of unreality, of arbitrary government authority. And this will be used to call for even more invasive procedures that don't do anything to enhance our security but invade our privacy and probably more sexual assaults as well. Who knows what they're going to come up with next. In other news, World Net Daily and Anthony Gucciardi are reporting that top generals reveal that Obama's secret high-level military purges. Retired Army Major General Patrick Brady says that the attack on high-level military personnel is so great that it has now obliterated the morale of troops at large, but more importantly, it's centered in terminating any high-level individual that will not go along with the plan. He said, there is no doubt that Obama is intent on emasculating the military and will fire anyone who disagrees with him. Another retired general... Army Lieutenant General William Jerry Boykin, who was with Delta Force, said over the past three years, it is unprecedented for the number of four-star generals to be relieved of duty and not necessarily relieved for cause, he said. I believe there is a purging of the military. The problem is worse than we have ever seen. Now, this comes on the heels of what Anthony Gucciardi pointed out in his article. He extended it to the nuclear transfer incident that we reported on at Dias Air Force Base and the fact that it was unprecedented that the second in command would be fired over a trivial cause, just $1,500 in counterfeit gambling chips reportedly. But that happened on the same day that we reported the secret transfer from Dias Nuclear, uh, Dias Air Force Base, where there are not supposed to be any nuclear bombs. And then it got even stranger because the top general in charge of nuclear weapons was then fired, not for a cause, not for any moral shortcomings, but simply because of his performance in a temporary job assignment, it said. Now, I wonder what kind of a temporary job assignment the top commander of the nuclear weapons would be under. 
So this is a story that continues to unfold. We see an unprecedented number of military personnel being purged, and they're saying they're being purged because they don't agree with Obama's philosophies. Tech giants are now throwing their weight behind legislation which would actually rein in TSA spying. Now, this is our story coming from Washington's blog, and it says that Dianne Feinstein supposedly has reversed her unbridled enthusiasm for the surveillance state and is now offering a bill that is going to rein it in. But do you remember her co-sponsoring the NDAA bill last year? It was simply a head fake. As a matter of fact, as we pointed out at the time, the proposed legislation would not do anything to rein in the controversial indefinite detention provisions of the NDAA, but she used that to get unanimous support in the Senate for passing the NDAA. And then when it went to committee, McCain just threw it out. So perhaps the same thing is going to be happening here. We will know that they have real reform in mind when it's not a bill, I don't think even the bill that's being proposed is really gonna rein in the NSA or the FISA court. We will know that there's something real when they finally come out and show us all of the rulings of this secretive court and when that secretive court is basically taken away. It is something that is not called for or allowed in the Constitution, and no amount of rearranging the chairs in the Titanic are really going to change that. If they're really serious about following the Constitution, if they're really serious about reform, we'll know it when things like the FISA court go away and when we see the Constitution clearly applied to the NSA. What they're proposing are just some minor changes that I don't really think are going to rein them in. If they're not going to follow the Constitution, if they're not going to get search warrants on people, these kind of specific changes really aren't going to change anything. And along the same lines, we now see that CISPA is coming back. You remember we had ACTA, we had SOPA, we had PIPA, we had CISPA-1, CISPA-2. Now it looks like CISPA-3 is going to be coming along. Keith Alexander has been begging for just that sort of thing, and Natural News reports that two senators, Dianne Feinstein and Saxby Chambliss, are ready to give it to him. Now, if you remember, CISPA is really a way for the copyright, intellectual copyright holders to assert their ownership over everything, but it also allows the government to immediately shut down websites just on the mere accusation. Again, taking away our due process and immediately shutting down anybody that they accuse of committing a crime. So it kind of benefits both the fascist uh, corporate, both sides of the fascist corporate government that we see developing in this country. It also gives legal immunity to the corporations if they give away information that they're collecting about you. So even if you don't have a business or a website, if they're collecting information about you and which of them aren't, if they voluntarily give it over to the government, they are going to be protected with legal immunity from your lawsuits. Well, if you're concerned about the NSA spying on you, and you should be, you may be surprised at how you're helping them. Thanks to incessant selfie madness, Facebook has the largest biometric database in the world. And it's all thanks to people voluntarily uploading pictures of themselves and then tagging them. You're helping to build that vast database of labeled faces by identifying yourself. And also because you're uploading multiple versions of your face, you're helping to improve the accuracy of the system. Every time you tag yourself in a picture, you're paving the way for universal facial recognition. Recognizing the huge potential for their database, Facebook bought Face.com, which is a company who developed a platform for accurate facial recognition using photos uploaded to the web. We're okay with thinking that this database is going to be used to track criminals and terrorists, but actually facial recognition software is being programmed for everyday use. High-end retail stores use it to spot VIPs. If the face is a match with a celebrity or valued customer, an alert is sent to an employee providing details like dress size, favorite buys, and shopping history. And you thought that was just in the movies. Now we all know that cars and televisions and the Xbox are being equipped with cameras and microphones so that they can monitor the faces of their users so they can target them for specific advertising based on their moods. But now Facebook has revealed that it's just a step away from tracking your cursor to understand your tastes better. Apparently as you aimlessly make your way around a web page, your mind is making many choices and Facebook wants to interpret those choices. For instance, if you hover over a link for Occupy Wall Street or March Against Monsanto, but refrain from clicking it so that your IP address won't alert the NSA that they're dealing with the conspirator, well, too late, because just by hovering over that link, your tastes will already be stored. And a partnership between Facebook and police could use that Occupy like against you as well. 
Facebook is working with police to create a kill switch to stop activists from using the website to mobilize support. But if you are able to mobilize and protest, be warned that you are not just another face in the crowd. Take a look at this picture on gigapixel.com. Stitching together a series of photos from a 10 megapixel camera, this is a crowd shot like never before. There is stunning detail even from a considerable distance, including high visibility through windows and identifying clothing from a few blocks away. And look, you can even tag yourself. Tell all your friends. Reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Leanne McAdoo. Now, a controversy has erupted over the Alamo and really what it means for UNESCO to take over a site. Once UNESCO took over Kronberg Castle, the site of Shakespeare's Hamlet, they forced the National Maritime Museum out of the castle and into a hole in the ground. This is what we can expect once UNESCO takes over the control and the management of a site. And remember that it's a seven square mile area around the Alamo and these other missions that they're going to take over. So it's a real issue. It is not something that we're just making up. And we need to take a look at this and consider what the circumstances are going to be. Now, also from Natural News tonight, we have confirmed that a girl was smuggled in the United Kingdom to have her organs harvested for wealthy recipients. Authorities in Great Britain have confirmed that for the first time, a young girl from Somalia was smuggled into the country specifically so that her organs could be harvested and sold to wealthy recipients for transplant. Now, tonight, after the news, we've got an interview with someone who is a documentary film producer, Mark Crutcher. And he's pointing out that exactly the same kind of infanticide that was happening in Philadelphia with Kermit Gosnell has also happened in Houston. The difference is, is that the local Texas authorities are not interested in investigating it, apparently, as of the moment. And coming up right after the break, Gigi Arnetta gives us an update on the Jose Mendez story. It's gun confiscation in California. Then Alex Jones will break down the demonization of gun owners as racists. And finally, Leanne McAdoo will interview Dr. Group. Stay tuned. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. You might remember Joe Mendez. He was on the Alex Jones Show as he was describing what happened to him outside of his building when the cops showed up and told him that his car was stolen and that they were taking him to jail. They proceeded to tell him that he was not allowed to have his weapons 
and of course, a complete violation of the Second Amendment. Joe is still battling with them and still does not know why he was arrested. Joe, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So I'm glad that you returned, but what have they done to you as far as your court case? Do you even know who's going to defend you? And do you know why you were arrested? Well, here, here's the thing. Again, I was arrested on August 7th of 2013. It's almost three months later. I go to court next Tuesday. And to this day, they still won't release the full discovery, which is they still won't tell me why I was arrested, why I've been thrown into the system, why my weapons were confiscated, why weapons were put in my face. They won't tell me. Uh, the last court date that we had, uh, the the public defender that, that stood in uh, asked the judge for another continuance. I've been to court four, five times already. And uh, the judge said, why? And the public defender said, because the district attorney can't seem to be able to give us the full discovery. <clears throat> now, they came to my house. They arrested me at gunpoint. They stormed our house. They ransacked our house. And you mean to tell me that the people that have done this to me, the district attorney who represents them, cannot get the full discovery for my case? This is ridiculous. This is why I'm on here today to let everybody know what's going on. This is a big railroad job, and we believe it stems from the gun confiscation that is going on here in California and how they're trying to tie us up in the courts and give us a lot of mumbo-jumbo so that we can't get our weapons back. Uh, disarming the population. Uh, I was telling uh, uh, Gigi that they brought in military armored personnel carriers with 50 caliber machine gun turrets. I, on my last video it, on my YouTube channel, I put the pictures, my personal pictures that I took with my camera at the police station here. And, um, it, you know, I, we believe that they're trying to disarm us. Something's up, which is the fact that to this day, I've gone to court like five times, and they won't tell me what led to the probable cause to lead to my arrest in, to begin with. They're just bumping me back and forth. The public defender who has been assigned to me, I've called her five times, several times during this case, and she can't seem to get a, uh, any time to meet with me because I want to ask her these questions. How is it possible that they arrest me, that they send agents out here, but yet they cannot get, and when I say they, the, the district attorney who's in charge of prosecuting me cannot get my full discovery as to why the judge signed the warrant for my arrest to begin with. They, they, I can't believe that they can't do that. They could come here and mess up my life. I lost my job. They, they threw my life into turmoil, and yet I cannot get the full discovery or they won't give it to the district attorney. And I have a, an idea as to why, because they don't have anything, because they've done something wrong, and they're trying to cover up, they're trying to fabricate, they're trying to work and probe into my life to see if they can tie me to anything else, which they won't be able to. And uh, they're buying time. And what it seems to me is that the public defender is working with the, the county of Sacramento to, to give them time, to buy them time. They only have a certain amount of time, from my, what I understand through procedure, to bring a case to court or dismiss it. And I called the public defender several times and I've asked her, you know, we need to file a motion for dismissal because if the district attorney can't get the full discovery, then this is a waste of time of taxpayers' money and time. And she just won't return my calls because I firmly believe that the public defender is working with them and to buying them time. Now you have, this is your second person, right? That you've talked to with? Yes, yes. So you had a different public defender than they told you. There was some weirdness in between, wasn't there? They didn't even know who was going to be defending you. Yes, yes. The first public defender that was assigned to me told me that since I bailed out, I was going to be sent to another court, to another division, that he would no longer be my public defender. I, I went to the public defender's office several times because, like I said, I can't afford a lawyer, and so I have to go with the public defender system. I'm, I'm still working. I'm trying to see if I can raise enough money to get a lawyer, a real lawyer that'll do something, but they bumped me over to another public defender. 
I called several times before I had to go to court the first time with this public defender, never got a call back. They, they like three, four different people answered the, 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 the call that I put into the public defender's office. And they all said, I don't represent you. I don't know who represents you. And they had me in, in, in limbo for a while. This is just so hard to believe. And you're going back on Tuesday, right? Yes, this is going to be my fifth time, uh, fourth continuance, because, again, they won't release the full discovery. Uh, like I said, the first guy told me, hey, we go in with the mentality of let's make a deal. And I told him, I'm not making any deal. And I'm not going to talk about any kind of plea or anything until I see the evidence that's being brought against me, which they won't show to me. <laughs> They won't release it to the public defender so that she can show it to me. I said, I want to see the evidence that led to this judge to sign this warrant to come to my house and put me into this system. And before that, I'm not going to plead guilty, not guilty, nothing, until I see the evidence. And again, to this day, three months later, they won't show it to me. And what's the local media doing? Are they covering this story? You know what? I, I uh, put in a, 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 an email um, and... It seems that there's other, uh, you know, stories that have priority over this. And, you know, a couple of them have been, like I said, the Roseville thing and stuff that we talked about earlier. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I still haven't gotten the contact back. I, con I contacted Cal Gun and uh, their lawyer. I mean, pretty much if there's no money, <laughs> he's not going to represent me. Uh, Rutherford wants to see the probable cause, and I told them they won't even give it to me. I can't give you the probable cause for you to get, send me a lawyer to, to represent me because they won't give us the probable cause. So I'm in a, I'm in a catch-22 situation here. Well, before they move into a complete police state, they want to disarm as many people as they can. And you said something about the armored vehicles, and I want to cover that right now. We have some footage from what happened last week in Roseville, which is near Sacramento. They came out with a, all guns loaded, if you want to call it that. They had the SWAT team out, and there's several pitch, pictures available actually online as well. But we do have some video footage here, if we could look at that right now. There's a lot of weirdness to that story. And again, I, I firmly believe... Just like the Boston bombings, I believe that were phony set up stage. I think that this was a staged event from the way they responded, from the way that everything went down. I, I firmly believe it was a staged event because what happened was this guy was on parole or whatever, blah, blah, blah. They found him in a house. Now, the, the funny part is that an agent got shot, which was a federal agent for Homeland Security working with the immigration. This guy was supposed to be a, 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 a gang member here or whatever. And, uh, and we, with the, with the question that we ask is, what is Homeland Security and federal agents doing trying to apprehend a gang member who's being sought after for a parole violation or whatever, blah, blah, blah? You know, it's just a weird story altogether. The, the uh, Homeland Security agent got shot. A couple of the other agents got shot. This guy went on a, a, a chase. He ended up here in a city called Roseville, which is right next to the city that I live in. Uh, they quarantined a big section of the city, and conveniently, and this is what, why I say this, they, they put those military armored personnel carriers to use. And you can see the military armored personnel carriers from my own personal photos on my last video on my channel. I went to the Citrus Heights Police Department, found it very weird that they parked them right outside where everybody can see them across from the from the post office, I told my wife, look, this, my wife has lived here all her life and said, this has never happened before. They have never brought in military. She goes, the police have their own armored personnel carriers, but for some reason, they felt the need that they had to call in the military armored personnel carriers. And you can clearly see from the videos, if you go to their website, that there were soldiers dressed in fatigues patrolling the streets along with the rest of the police officers. But, Joe, sometimes, well, at least here in Austin, we have our own police department dressed in fatigues, and they come in their full SWAT gear with their masks, so you can't identify them. And perhaps it's the same thing there now. It, it may very well just be Department of Homeland Security plus police officers dressing up. Yeah, yeah, it could, it could be dressing up. But here's my thing. Just remember a couple of years ago, SWAT used to show up in black tactical gear, mm -hmm. which, which distinguished them uh, from, from the regular police officers. Now they're showing up in military-colored vehicles, military-style vehicles with military clothing. 
what my what my question is: Are they trying to acclimate the people to be ready for when and if martial law is ever called, they just accept? But let's let's take this a step further. I was reading a little bit about the home that he had barricaded himself in, and there was a child in that house, and there were over 300 bullets sprayed into this house. And exactly. the holes the holes are still there. The evidence is still there. So where's the caution? And here's my point, what, why I believe it's also staged, and you brought up a good point. There was over 300 bullet holes. They were in every direction. There was a family supposedly hiding in one of the rooms where conveniently a couple of agents came to the window, opened it, and let them out or whatever. If there's that many bullet holes flying everywhere, somebody from that family should have gotten hit. He himself, the suspect, should have should have been hit. I mean, it's just a weird story altogether. And again, you're absolutely right. Where is the caution? They just opened up, knowing there's a family in there? It doesn't make sense. Now, from the initial report, this guy barricaded himself in the house and turned on all the gas and had gasoline containers with him, which meant that if the police decided to shoot in there, they could have set off the gas and blown everything up. And yet, you mean to tell me that they still riddled the house with 300 bullet holes? It just doesn't make sense. Well, and on top of that, they all ought to be reprimanded for the fact that they can't even get one lousy shot out of 300, as far as I'm concerned. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All, right. all right. Well, let's tell our, our viewers what, what your website address is or your YouTube channel so they can see some more footage. Yeah, my YouTube channel is Warrior for God 13, which is Warrior, the number four, God 13. And I have on my last the latest video that I have posted up there, and I'm posting up another video today, but the latest video that I had posted up on there, I have the actual photographs from the Citrus Heights Police Department of the armored personnel vehicles that were parked right in front. And these are the same ones that were put to use during this last incident that happened in Rosedale. And there's a major gun grab going on in California, and Jerry Brown is helping that be, to be pushed to, you know, right along. So um, pretty soon you won't even be able to own a weapon of any kind in California. That's what it looks like they're trying to go. I mean, when I was arrested, when I was arrested and, and they took me into the interrogating room, you know, the guy tells me, you know, you're in, in uh, violation by owning assault rifles. And I said... Those are legal because they're pre-banned and blah, 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 and this and that. And like they have pistol grips. I said, a lot of other weapons have pistol grips. And he said, we're going after all weapons. See, that's what he told me. We're going after everything. Well, he Which, admitted it. Yeah, yeah. He I mean, it. here in Texas, they, they don't even read the law. So, I mean, I'm sure in California, uh, it's way past that. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's horrible here. I mean, and, and, the, and the, the sheep just... <laughs> <laughs> the sheep think it's the greatest thing. I mean, it's the greatest thing. Yeah, please get those nutcases off the street with those evil guns or whatever. It's like I said, what they don't understand is when they disarm the legal citizens, the only ones that are going to have guns here are going to be the police who can't do their job or won't do their job and the criminals because the criminals don't go to the store and buy the gun at the store and register. They, they get the, the guns hot off the street and, you know, they, they're heavily armed. And they know how to shoot. And they know how to shoot. <laughs> yep, and well, they know how to shoot. Give, you know, give us an update as soon as you get out of court on the 5th and let us know what's going on. I sure will. I, I'll give you guys a call back, and, and, and if you guys want, we can do another interview and what have you, and I'll let you know what's going on with that case. I just felt I had to tell you guys because there's just, it's not, there's something wrong with the procedure of my case, and I'm sure that there's other people going through this, and you need to come forward and you need to, you need to speak out so that people know what's going on. Well, Joe, thank you so much for standing for the Second Amendment. Thank you for having me here, and I'll never give up. Sign up for PrisonPlanet.tv and give your username and password to up to 10 people. And, of course, you can always go to the InfoWars store and help support the cause that way, too. We have lots of great products that you can select from on the InfoWars store. And you can always buy yourself a Second Amendment t-shirt because those are available as well. Thank you so much for joining us on the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Gigi Arnetta. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.
Well, revelations about abortionist Kermit Gosnell in Philadelphia shocked the nation. We learned about live births, live babies being dismembered, being murdered. He was ultimately found guilty of eight counts of murder. He's serving a life sentence. But what you may not realize is that this is not an isolated incident. This is happening throughout the country. A well-documented case is right here in Texas. We have three witnesses who have come forward to talk about the similar practices at a Houston abortion clinic. And yet, after five months, there's been no investigation yet. And we're talking to someone who's breaking this story. This is Mark Crutcher. He is uh, with Life Dynamics. He's created an extensive litigation support system that helps women sue abortionists who kill, injure, or sexually assault them. He's also a documentary film producer. We carry his films here at InfoWarsStore.com. Mafa 21 is a very powerful film about the roots of the abortion industry, the roots of eugenicism. Joining us today is Mark Crutcher. Welcome, Mark. It's good to have you here. It is my pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Now, you are the, uh, you've produced a wonderful documentary, uh, MAFA 21, about a horrible subject, uh, black genocide. And what we're seeing now is that just as Pastor Niemuller pointed out about the Nazis, first they come for one group, then they come for another group. If you don't do anything about it, eventually they're going to come for you. And now we see the abortion eugenesis industry going after everybody. They're not strictly focused on just the black communities. There still is a lot. They're very highly focused and probably more focused on them still, but they're going after everyone now, aren't they? Well, yeah, they're, everybody is their target, but they are still uh, primarily, right, even to this day, primarily concerned with the black and now the Hispanic community. Um, the biggest expansion in their eugenics uh, agenda has been towards the Hispanic community, mm -hmm. um, and, that, and that's who they're targeting currently. But, yeah, our documentary, I think, makes it very crystal clear that the original motivation behind the legalization of abortion had nothing to do with reproductive rights or women's rights or, or choice or any of that other nonsense that they used to, to justify it. The original motivation behind the legalization of abortion was to wipe out the black community. That's right. Now, the reason we've got you on today is we've got some breaking news right here in Texas. People who have looked at the trial of uh, Gosnell in Philadelphia were amazed to learn what was going on in those abortion clinics, even though you and many others have been pointing this out for quite some time. We have a similar situation that's been developing here in Texas, and you've been on this from the very beginning. Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, the, to refresh everybody's memory, one of the, the issues in the Gosnell situation was that uh, he was inducing these women to give birth to live babies who were coming in to have abortions, and then he would kill the baby outside the womb. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were able to gather information that the same exact thing is going on in Texas. And I can tell you, it's going on all over the country. This yeah. is not relegated to Pennsylvania or in Texas. But we were able to get interviews with three uh, employees of an abortion clinic in Houston run by an abortionist named David uh, Carpin. And... Um, the same things are going on there. I mean, let's, let's, take on, a look, let's take a look, uh, Mark, at this uh, video that you got of these witnesses that came forward and talked to you about it. You filmed it. Let's let them describe exactly what happened. You see the baby alive. Yes, sir. And him, him kill that baby outside the womb. Yes, sir. And this would be done by jamming some sort of instrument into the... Either that or... or, or soft spot. Or, or um, twitch, actually twisting the head off the neck kind of with his own bare hands. And you saw that happen? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So he sometimes would twist the head would go I'm sorry. Through, sometimes he would go through the stomach as well. Sometimes he would do what? He would like force it through the stomach. The the instrument, mm -hmm. the, for, the is it beards? And like twist it. Yeah. And you Another, saw that? Mm-hmm. Anything that he could get to the fastest. Like she said, the umbilical, he was probably perforating the umbilical cord. Um, I normally saw either the snipping of the spine or the introduction of the instrument in the soft spot of the fetus, normally, or twisting of the neck. I remember twisting. he would put, like, his finger? Yeah, or his finger. He'd take his finger and then... Oh, and through the throat. throat. Yeah. Uh, that's just horrific stuff. I mean, we're looking at them poking their fingers through their throat, through the soft spot in their head twisting their heads off. This is what they're saying is going on in this abortion clinic. As you point out, this is going on in other abortion clinics. What happened after you got to these witnesses? Well, you, well, you gave this information, you turned this over to state authorities. 
Well, we first turned it over to, um, yeah, we, we made it public. And, of course, people aren't going to, and, and nor should they, act on edited material. So we were going to make the unedited, complete um, interview available to law enforcement. And we did that through a state representative uh, named Phil King. And we provided him with the raw, unedited footage, which he then provided to the homicide division of the Houston Police Department. Because understand something, even by the liberal and abortion laws, which the country operates under currently, um, what these women are describing is a murder, yes. or, or multiple murders, and sometimes multiple murders occurring on the same day. Mm. And so this information was then turned over to, to the authorities, and supposedly a criminal investigation was launched. And uh, we haven't heard anything yet. Um, I've been one of the people who's been urging the pro-life community to be patient, that homicide investigations can take a long time, and so let the Houston police do their job and and stand down. Don't don't be you know poking your finger in their eye, and don't be assuming that nothing's going to be done. Let them let the course let the thing run its course. I'm beginning to get the sense now, however, uh, after all these months, we released this information and turned it over to the police back in May, and here we are in the first of November, and not a peep. That's right. And I'm beginning to get suspicious that the fix may be in. Now, you said this to not only to Representative King, but then he did a, he put together a letter and sent this to the Homicide Division of the Houston Police. He sent it to the Texas Medical Board. He sent it to the Commissioner of the Texas Department of State Health Services. And these letters were co-signed by 20 Texas lawmakers. And yet, have any of these three organizations contacted you about information? Not one. Okay. We haven't heard of Pete. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the Houston... You know, one thing that people need to understand is you've got a mayor in Houston who's an open and practicing lesbian. Everybody knew that when they elected her. Um, she's raging pro-abort. Her lover um, is a former board member of Planned Parenthood, as I understand. I know she has some connections to Planned Parenthood, the nation's well, number one abortionist. Actually, she's uh, a, her, her partner, Kathy Hubbard, is actually campaign treasurer for Planned Parenthood of Houston and for Southeast Texas Action Fund PAC. So there's right. actually and, some ethical questions that have been raised in the past. I don't know if those are still outstanding or if they've been resolved, but there were ethical questions about her relationship to Planned Parenthood via her partner. And her challenger now for the next election, Ben Hall, said that the city of Houston is a victim of a mayor who is a shakedown artist. And he pointed out just in the first six months of this year, 2013, there were 54 contributors who gave $775,000 to her, and they received $65 million in contracts. That's a pretty good return on investment. That's about $86 back for every dollar that they gave to her. Absolutely. And, you know, this... I don't want to. I don't want to say right now that the, that the fix is in, but I'm getting suspicious that that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll tell you something, uh, David, that, that makes me very suspicious about this is we released this information uh, the day after Gosnell was sent to prison in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're if you're Doug, and I said his, earlier his name was David Carpenter, it's not. It's Douglas Carpenter. If you're Douglas Carpenter. And you've just seen one of your colleagues go to jail for the rest of his life because his employees came forward worried that they were going to go to jail and basically ratted him out. Um, and now three of your employees are coming becoming public. Mm -hmm. My first thought was, this guy's going to run. If I'm this guy and I've got the millions of dollars in the bank that, that he clearly does, he lives in a $4 million house, if I've got his kind of money, and I'm looking at this situation unfolding in front of me, I'm going to be on the next plane to a country that doesn't have an extradition document with the United States. Yeah. So, so well, why, or, you're going to, or you're going to take some of that money and you're going to buy some influence with a mayor who already has close ties to Planned Parenthood and who's shown that you can get uh, places with <laughs> when you make campaign contributions to her, right? And you're talking to someone in law enforcement there who's saying, don't worry about it. Hmm. Don't worry about it, Douglas. We got it covered. You don't need to flee. Yeah, yeah. I am very suspicious when he when this man didn't take off instantly. I I became suspicious at that time. But again, I told everyone, let's just keep our powder dry. You know, stay quiet. Let the police do their job. Uh, don't be like I said, poking your finger in their eye. Um, 
But at this point, uh, we're talking about all these many months later, um, when you've got clear evidence, uh, you've got three witnesses to uh, first-degree murders, and nothing has happened, um, and the guy's still hanging around, um, I'm beginning to get, to get a little bit... You know, Mark, uh, what, what I see with this, we, it, it's difficult sometimes for people to get their heads around the real issue, the fundamental issues involved. I know we had the NSA, a lot of people say, well, you know, if I don't have anything uh, uh, to hide, so I don't really mind if they're looking at my telephone. And yet we had a comedian go around and he would hold a boom mic over people's heads, dressed in a suit, looking like a, a government agent with sunglasses. And the minute he would do that, they instinctively were repelled by that. They instinctively understood what was wrong with somebody standing around recording their private conversations. They were, I'm sure they were talking about things that were perfectly innocent, but it was an offense to them. The same thing happens with these fully born, fully developed children, these late-term abortions or these uh, uh, murders after these children are born. And yet, what people don't really understand is that this isn't just the, the outrage, and it is an outrage. It's not to minimize the horrific crimes of Gosnell and this doctor in Houston. But what people don't realize is that it's just as outrageous when they do it a month before, or two months before, or three months before. I've heard a doctor talk about how he took a fetus out that was uh, very, very tiny, fit in the palm of his hand. He said it was a perfectly formed little child wiggling around in his hand. He snipped the abortion, the uh, umbilical cord, and he said it just became, looked like a piece of plastic after that. People see these fetuses in jars, they don't make the connection to a child that has fingerprints, a beating heart, all these, uh, all the aspects of, of a human being, even a different blood type in many cases than the mother. Uh, half the time it's a, it's a female child, half the time it's a male child. It's a unique individual, and yet people can't make that connection. Yeah, and that's a good point that you make, David, because in the case, uh, I've had people say, well, this is horrific. They're killing live babies. Yes. Well, the babies are live anyway. Yes. And the issue here is not, if you think about it for a minute, when, when you have all these people get all upset, they're saying, well, these babies are coming out of these women, and they're still, they're kicking around, they're live, and these women are talking about twisting their heads off. But if you were to be able to put that baby back into the womb and do the same thing, then it's just an abortion. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. this is going on everywhere all over the country, and at some point, that, you know really what it is, David, is intellectual dishonesty. Mm -hmm. Because these people know that that's the truth. If, if you're going to get outraged by these babies being killed outside the womb, but be perfectly comfortable with them being killed inside the womb, there's something wrong with you. Yes, yes. You know, I, I had my aha moment was with uh, what they call partial birth abortion, which was a bunch of nonsense. It really was essentially the same thing that's going on here, except that they removed the baby partially and said that, well, since it's partially in the womb, we're going to call it an abortion instead of a murder. That was my aha moment. Prior to that, I wanted to kind of take a libertarian point of view and say, you know what, the government needs to just stay out of this completely, let people make up their minds as to when a child is alive or not. Once that came up, I realized these people had a very different agenda. I didn't know at that time about the eugenics agenda that was going on, that, that really is the overriding uh, issue here. But I knew at that point they were being intellectually dishonest. Hopefully when people look at these trials like Gosnell, when they look at what's going on here with this doctor in Houston, they're going to understand, as we pointed out, that there isn't really any difference. Alex had us go out and uh, talk to people on the street about uh, doing abortions of three-year-olds. You know, where do you draw the line? You know, okay, if, if you can abort your child uh, right after it's born, can't you abort a three-year-old? And now we right. see just in the last couple of days, we've seen that they're talking about euthanizing children. Uh, it's not just old people, it's not just adults who are going to euthanize children. Well, of course, the principle is essentially the same. Uh, and the principle is the same whether you're aborting a three-year-old, you're aborting a three-minute-year-old, or whether you're aborting a, a baby that is uh, three minutes before coming out of the womb. It, it really, there's really not that much difference, but maybe we can wake people up if they if they really see this, just like people wake up when they see somebody with a boom mic standing over their head recording their conversations. They understand the importance of privacy. Maybe we can get people to understand the importance of life. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that we are at one, at one point. I, you know, we look back on things like the, the German Holocaust, or we look at slavery, and we say today, how could people do that? And mm -hmm. how could other people think about it and stand around and not do anything while it's going on? I'm going to tell you right now, David, we are going to 
there is going to come a time in history when they look back on this time and look at the abortion issue and say, how the devil could these people stand around and let that go on? Yes. How could one human being do that to another one and other human beings know about it and keep their mouths shut? And, you know, everybody, when you say that to people, inevitably you get this, oh, yeah, that's, you're, out, you're being outrageous. That's, you know, this is not a Holocaust. This is not anything similar to what those other things were. But the fact is that anybody who's involved in, the, in a Holocaust like this doesn't believe it's like the previous Holocaust. That's the nature of it. That's right. That's right. You and people probably, are going to realize in the future, they're going to realize what the real eugenics agenda was behind this, just as people now realize what Hitler was doing, because that is the real agenda behind that. That's the broader agenda. And it's, uh, it's not just abortion. It's in other areas as well. But you pointed that out wonderfully in your documentary, MAFA 21. And Mark, we want to keep up on this, uh, what's happening in Houston. So we want to keep in touch with us. Let us know how this is developing. We're going to be following this story. Well, you let me know anytime I can come on, and, and I'll be happy to update you. Will do. Thank you so much for your work. Thank you, David. Bye-bye. And you can check out that documentary at InfoWarsStore.com. That's MAFA 21. As Mark Crutcher pointed out, the end of slavery was just the beginning of eugenicist campaign against the black community. And now they have taken that campaign broader. They're going after all groups. We can see what they've done with the American Indians. We see what they've done with the black community. This is an agenda, however, that we're now starting to see applied to everyone. It's important to understand its roots, and it's especially important to understand it for the black community because they are still bearing the brunt of this eugenicist agenda of abortion. And if you want to keep up to date as to what's happening in this story and many other breaking stories that aren't going to be covered by the mainstream media, subscribe to Prison Planet TV. Your subscription helps us to continue this operation, and it lets you share it with up to 10 other people simultaneously. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back weeknights, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Remember three and a half years ago when they were trying to pass Obamacare and we were reading the legislation and pointing out that it was written by insurance companies to raise premiums and kick people off their existing plans and was a giant fraud? We were called racist. If you didn't support Obamacare, you were racist. There was no proof, no reason, no logic. Well, the same thing is happening again. We've seen in the last year this drumbeat by Fox Sports columnists like Whitlock and others that you are racist if you basically own guns or if you're a member of the NRA, that you are the new Ku Klux Klan. I did not go as far as I would like to go because my, my thoughts on the NRA uh, and America's gun culture, I, I believe the NRA is the new KKK. Well, the drumbeat has been intensifying with a new study put out by a Brit and an Australian, two places where their populations have been disarmed, uh, putting together doctored statistics to say that owning guns is racist. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you own guns, it's because you don't like black people. Of course, uh, a few years ago, uh, Michael Moore didn't even need statistics to say this. He said, scared white people out in the countryside have these because they don't like black people. But what Jason Whitlock of Fox and what Bob Costas and what Michael Moore don't want you to know is the historical fact that at the end of the Civil War, they were passing laws so that black folks couldn't own guns in the South. And the NRA was founded to teach blacks how to use firearms to protect themselves from the Ku Klux Klan. This is a fact. It was one of the main reasons the National Rifle Association was founded. But in this upside down world, the NRA and gun owners collectively are told that we are the new Ku Klux Klan because we are against individuals being ganged up on and abused and because the NRA was founded to fight the Ku Klux Klan. Thank the Lord for our Constitution. I also want to thank the NRA for its legacy. The National Rifle Association was started, founded by religious leaders who wanted to protect free slaves from the Ku Klux Klan. They would raise money, buy arms, show the free slaves how to use those arms, and protect their families. 
God bless you. Many of us probably wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the NRA. The truth is, none of these so-called liberals that are really authoritarian progressives, they are for the progression of tyranny, want the state that's arming to the teeth to be uh, restricted. They don't want uh, all of the Hollywood stars who are anti-gun for other individuals to have their armed bodyguards taken away. No, 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 no. They're just for the mass of the commoners who can't afford bodyguards. They're just for us to be disarmed. These people are anti-liberty, anti-freedom. In fact, recently, Eddie Vedder came out uh, of Pearl Jam and said that people are trying to take his free speech away because they're arguing with him, saying they don't want to have their guns taken away. They also don't think that you have the right to speak as an American, as a taxpayer, as a father. So he wants to take your right of self-defense away, so you argue against him, and then he calls that an attack on his free speech. No, no, disagreeing with you is not an attack on your free speech. Taking free speech away with the fairness doctrine, like the FCC is trying to do, is. So again, these people are authoritarian and don't even know it. They are useful idiots of the establishment. It isn't about racism, it's about elitism. The elite wants to be the only ones with guns, and they want the rest of us, whether you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, agnostic, pagan, atheist, it doesn't matter, they want us disarmed. And it's time for all free people to come together for the right of self-defense of the individual against victim disarmament. I'm Alex Jones, signing off for InfoWars.com. You can follow us at Twitter at RealAlexJones. And if you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. I'm Leanne McAdoo here with a special health report, and joining me is Dr. Edward Group. He has been in the healthcare industry for 25 years, and he's an internationally renowned researcher and developer, and you're working on a nascent iodine. And that's a big issue with women's health. Uh, men and women, we're both, we have a huge iodine deficiency, but it affects women differently than it affects men. Can you talk to me a little bit about some of the issues that women are facing with iodine? Sure, Leanne. Thanks for having me on. It's a huge issue because the majority of women are deficient in iodine. Women's thyroid glands are about twice the size of a male's thyroid gland. And if you look at the amount of sufferers across the nation and across the world, you're going to see about six women to every one man suffering from thyroid disorder. And it's all due to the lack of iodine. The lack of iodine in the diet and the lack of iodine that's absorbed into the thyroid gland. The reason why women are deficient in iodine is because they produce high levels of estrogen and they get take in a lot of estrogen from milk products, soy products, and it works a little bit differently in women than it does in men. Even though these disruptors cause an iodine deficiency, the thyroid will start sucking in fluoride, chlorine, and block the ability for the thyroid gland to take in iodine. So if I was to take probably 5,000 women out there, close to like 4,900 of them would have an iodine deficiency. And what causes that, or some of the symptoms involved with that, are excess fat around the waist, cellulite around the thigh area, puffiness, um, low energy levels, hormone disruptions, mood swings, headaches, brain fog, the list goes on and on. But what really is the cause of suffering in women these days is fibrocystic breast disease. You know, when iodine deficiency was first looked at years ago, people were developing goiters. And a goiter is an extension of the thyroid gland on your neck, and it's when the thyroid gland starts to develop scar tissue or cysts on it. Now, what happens is because the ovaries actually produce thyroid hormones and the, th and the ovaries absorb iodine just like the thyroid, as well as the breast tissue, that's why we're seeing a major increase in breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and fibrocystic breast disease because it's showing the same thing that happens in the thyroid where the goiter is happening throughout the body. 
So once you put women on an iodine supplement, a good iodine supplement, there's a lot of different ones out there. There's potassium iodide and there's iodine that are in alcohol-based tinctures, which can actually be toxic to the body. What we've done is created a form of iodine which is non-toxic to the body and it's in its atomic form. When it's in the atomic form, the body doesn't have to break anything down and it actually gets absorbed directly into the thyroid tissue. So that's what we're recommending women and children take. Another thing is there's been a lot of problems with infertility, altered menstrual cycles in women, pain with menstrual cycles in women, and not only that, if a woman is deficient, let's say she gets pregnant. If she gets pregnant and her hormones increase, she's definitely going to have a deficiency in iodine. And that can cause spontaneous abortions. That can cause mental retardation in children. So it's extremely important for women if they're pregnant, if they're nursing, or if they just have a child and they're breastfeeding to be on extra iodine. It's really one of the most amazing supplements or minerals out there in the world and yet it's the most deficient in women and men. And I know for older women they start to get uh, mammograms and of course that's going to really heavily radiate the breast tissue which is is terrible. Is this going to will that help counter that effect or well, that's another good point. Uh, I personally, I recommend that women do not get mammograms because two mammograms of the breast tissue is equivalent to about 100 CT scans, and that is just extremely damaging. And actually, studies have come out to prove that mammograms actually induce or cause cancer. But with the fibrocystic breast disease, think of how many women feel lumps in their breasts, and it's because of an iodine deficiency and they run to the doctor and they get biopsies and you know there are some false positive rates with biopsies and who knows how many women you know went in because they felt a lump in their breast and then all of a sudden came out and you know had cancer had a mastectomy or something like that when we're not actually treating the problem right. you know we're treating the cause or treating the cause we're treating the problem and so what about a post-menopausal women or women going through menopause? Is there some positive health benefits of iodine? Absolutely, because when the hormones of women start to fluctuate right around menopause, they're not balanced because when the thyroid is deficient of iodine, it has a hard time balancing the hormones, and it also has a, a hard time uh, balancing the adrenal glands and your metabolism, and that's why you put on a little bit of extra weight. But with the studies and with the individuals that we've talked to or the, the ladies that we've helped through menopause, what the iodine has done is it's decreased dramatically the sweats, the night sweats, the headaches, all the symptoms that come along with uh, menopause. Uh, another problem that we're seeing is that we're seeing women with huge ovarian cysts and we're seeing women with polycystic ovarian disease. And the medical solution for that is to do a hysterectomy or to take everything out of the body. Now that throws off the whole woman's hormone levels automatically. So it's as easy and cheap as getting some nascent iodine, taking some iodine on a regular basis to avoid. If you're a woman and you have tender breasts around your menstrual cycle, that means you're deficient in iodine most of the population. <laughs> yes, it is. It's like nine out of ten women. Right. So, I mean, it's a, it's a bigger problem than most people think, and it's something that needs to be addressed and looked into it by every woman out there. And it's amazing what happens when a woman gets on a good form of iodine and starts supplementing the iodine. I mean, so many things go away. There's women that are putting it on that have breast cancer that are actually painting iodine around the breast that the cancer's in and the cancer is going away. Wow, that's so incredible. It's a powerful anti-cancer or cancer preventative agent too because once all those toxins get in, iodine helps detoxify harmful toxins like mercury, fluoride, chlorine, bromide, these cancer-causing agents that get into the system. So once you start reducing those and you start giving the organs that need the iodine to protect themselves what they need, then you start eliminating all these pro problems that women have and all the trips to the doctor's office, all the mammograms, all the you know suffering that you're going through with the pain every month, 
and all the other things just go away. Right, and then the record rates of children now that are being born in California that are having this high radiation from Fukushima, the, the water getting over there, and it's just, it's incredible. So that's going to lower the IQ. So this could be something potentially that'll, that'll help with that and, and build up your reserves. I know how mothers are with their children, and it's a disaster right now with children, and not only on the West Coast, but even as far as Jacksonville, Florida, the plumes of radiation are coming over and the areas that are getting the most rainfall are putting high levels of iodine-131, the radioactive form of iodine, into the soil, into the food supply, into the water supply, and children are very, very sensitive. They're developing, their thyroids are developing, so it's really important as a mom to start looking at what your child is eating, eliminate all the things that can block the receptor sites like fluoride and chlorine and bromide, which is in white bread. So if your kid is eating bread every day for lunch or whatever, switch to organic mm -hmm. and then start supplementing with iodine because you don't want your kid to grow up with a lowered IQ. And that's the thing, that's exactly what happens. They have a super low IQ, they have a hard time focusing, and then what happens? Then they're labeled with ADD, ADHD, or a special child with autism when really all it is was they were toxic of fluoride and chlorine and a bunch of other toxic chemicals and deficient in iodine. So tell me more about InfoWarsLife.com and the products that are, you're developing there, and especially Survival Shield. Well, Alex looked around and did a lot of research all over the world, and he contacted me because we specialize in producing high-end, high-quality health products that are GMO free, that are vegan friendly, that are kosher certified, and really just the best of the best. And he, he did an extensive search and talked to me a couple times, continued his search, and then came back to me because we developed a processing method that we could produce the strongest form of nascent iodine in a non-toxic vegetable glycerin base. And that's exclusively available right now at InfoWarsLife.com and I highly suggest not only women, but men as well, stock up on this product because it's something that you really need. You're not going to get iodine in the food and you're not going to get it anywhere else. I highly recommend everybody stock up on that. I know it's a quick selling product and it's, it's very hard to make and it's a very time consuming thing to make too. And we're going to be launching a lot of other products too for the InfoWars and Prison Planet team and for Alex Jones. And we want to, Alex wants to make sure that these are the best products in the world, they're the cleanest products in the world, and starting with the Survival Shield, that is an amazing nascent iodine complex. And when I say nascent iodine, for those who don't know what nascent iodine is, nascent iodine is the atomic iodine, which is the detoxified, perfect form that your body needs. So your body doesn't have to break it down, it doesn't have to change the form of it, it's usable, it goes right into your system and it goes right into your thyroid. So I highly recommend everybody go to InfoWarsLife.com, check out Survival Shield. Literally, it will put a survival shield around you and your family from a host of health conditions. And especially women, it's so important. I love that it's uh, non-GMO, but we especially, you know, women of the childbearing age, we contain all the life inside of us. The, our, our future generations are always in our bodies, and so that's why it's so important to build up our defenses because that is the best way that we can fight control and tyranny is to be healthy and strong and high IQs are the future generations need to be intelligent and get off the fluoride. So go to InfoWarsLife.com and check out all the great products that we've got there and help support you and your family and protect your health. Thank you so much, Dr. Group. Thanks for having me on, Leanne.